Joining us now, national political correspondent for Time, Molly Ball. Her new cover story for the magazine out this morning is entitled, Does This Ride Ever End? Inside the GOP Race. Reverend Al Sharpton is back with us for the hour as well. So, Molly, what a great Molly, question. Does it? Does it ever <laughs> How end? How does the story end, Molly? Please. I mean, can you see the future? I personally have not acquired psychic powers. All I can do is report, yeah. so I cannot actually ask, answer the question uh, posed by that amazing uh, painting on our cover. But I can ask it, and I can do some reporting. I spent a lot of time in Iowa reporting on the Rays. And, uh, and you know, and what the yeah, I, I think, you know, Obviously, Trump is way ahead. Obviously, he has an enormous lead. The new Iowa poll out this morning uh, shows that yet again. On the other hand, it's sort of a glass half empty, glass half full thing for uh, non-Trump candidates or, or anti-Trump Republicans, right? Yes, Trump has 42 percent of the Iowa electorate. That means there's 58 percent of Iowa Republican voters who are still looking around, potentially more than that. In all of these polls, there's some percentage of even the Trump supporters who say that they're open to another candidate. So that's what continues to give the rest of these candidates hope. And that's why they're spending so much time in Iowa, looking at that as a place where his support might be just a little bit softer than nationally and hoping that they can they can get a chance there. You know, Molly, we're always looking at, I say we, so many in the media, and I'll, I'll include myself as one, one of those, obsessing over the people who are with Trump till the bitter end, right? Wh whoever the diehards are, maybe it's 45% of the party, maybe it's 50% of the party. I think also telling, though, in a lot of these polls and questioning whether this ride ends eventually is that the number of never-Trumpers in the Republican Party seem to be growing bit by bit. And now maybe it's around 25% or that so. And again, that's not enough mm -hmm. to stop him in a primary, but 21, four, one out of four voters saying they'll never vote for a guy who may win the party's nomination. Well, that would be devastating for any party, any time in any election. Yeah, no, it's such a good point. And the and what you also see, right, is that no one candidate has managed to claim that block of the party. You don't see that 25 percent uh, of, of the party that consists of voters who don't like Trump very actively. Uh, you don't see them all getting behind one alternative. They clearly have not gotten behind Ron DeSantis, who was hoping that they could be sort of the base of his campaign, I think, and serve as a floor. You don't see them getting behind one of the other more overtly anti-Trump candidates, like like a Christie uh, or a Hutchinson. Uh, and so, you know, when you hear in, in my article, I quote New Hampshire Governor Chris Sununu uh, talking about, you know, wanting to topple Trump, wanting Trump not to be the party's nominee. They're saying we've got to make this a one on one. We've got to make this Trump versus one other guy, because that's the only way one candidate is going to consolidate enough of the party uh, to actually be a threat to the front runner. Molly, uh, Al Sharpton, one of the things that's interesting to me about uh, your article is that it is almost seeming like we are talking about a personality uh, of Donald Trump and his being able to build this kind of following around his persona and the others uh, that are running against him not being able to out personality to him and they're really not been able to make this a policy debate. Uh, you know, if we look at recent history, the Republicans stood for this, the Democrats stood for that. They've not been able to make that the argument that we stand for this, as opposed to what Biden and them stand for. They're reacting to the personality of Donald Trump. Do you see anyone that can break out of that and say, let's get out of this? We're not talking about show business here. We're talking about the way we want to see the country govern and, and raise the debate to it's us against them in terms of the Democrats, how we want to see the country conduct policy, legislation, and conduct the country. You know, it's such a good point. And you look at a candidate like Ron DeSantis, who, who I think policy is his love language. He would prefer to talk about that over absolutely anything. Uh, but my article opens with an anecdote, and I 
and I have about a dozen of these that I could have used, but one of many anecdotes that we've seen on the trail where a voter is demanding some kind of emotion from Ron DeSantis, some kind of personality. Voters, especially in a primary, of course, they care about policy and policy differences, but in a primary, the candidates are much more defined by personality. And so they keep asking DeSantis to show them some personality, to be a little bit human, uh, and he's just not able to do it. He persistently cannot give these voters what they want. And so when they compare that to the personality of a Donald Trump, and I feel like the other thing uh, that I've learned from my reporting on the ground in Iowa and other places is that a lot of Republican voters view Trump as a sort of incumbent. Because he's been president once before, he has a stature that the other candidates just cannot match. And I think that's a big reason that they found it difficult to get traction against him.